dudes, Dude the Builder here. And in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to start talking about allocators. Um, in the next series of videos, we're going to be talking about different allocators that you can use in Zig. Uh, continuing the topic of memory management in general. And in this uh, video specifically, we're going to be talking about the fixed buffer allocator. So let's get right to it. Um, here we have uh, the same cat alloc function that we saw previously in the in the previous video. I added a proper uh, comment here <laughs> uh, to the function. Um, it's basically a function that concatenates two strings using an allocator. Okay. Here uh, we're gonna we're gonna perform the test of uh, using that function with a fixed buffer allocator. Here are our two input strings that we want to uh, concatenate. And here um, we see basically the most important part of uh, using a fixed buffer allocator is that uh, the fixed buffer allocator is uh, primarily uh, comes in handy when you know how much memory you need ahead of time, okay? So um, when you have a specific amount of memory um, that you know um, the allocations won't exceed that amount of memory, then you can take advantage of the fact that the fixed buffer allocator can use uh, a simple uh, array of bytes that you create and you provide it uh, that uh, array of bytes as a buffer. And what does that mean? It means that we are strictly using memory on the stack, which is uh, much faster than using uh, memory allocated on the heap. Um, this is because when you have to allocate on the heap, you have to make uh, a request to the operating system via what's called uh, as a system, system call. And that uh, has a pretty high overhead cost. When you're dealing with memory in the stack, um, it's basically uh, already there. The function um, has been called and the function frame has been set up on the stack. So no other type of interaction with the operating system has to occur. And uh, for that reason, dealing with stack memory is much faster than dealing with uh, heap allocated memory. So if you know how much memory you need and that amount is not going to be uh, like a huge gigabytes of memory because another aspect of this is that the stack is limited to a, to a certain stack size which I, like I mentioned in the previous video it depends on the operating system um, but usually it won't go past uh, uh, several megabytes so if you know you have uh, a need for uh, a fixed size of, of, of memory and that memory is not going to be huge then you can uh, make use, take advantage of the fixed buffer allocator, which is going to offer the best performance in that case. Okay. So here, what we're going to do is we create a buffer here, which is basically an array. We're creating an array of bytes, 12 bytes here. Why 12? Because that's exactly what we need here. We need 12 bytes to concatenate these two strings. Okay. Each one of them has six bytes. Okay. So uh, we hard code here the 12. <laughs> Um, for, for the length of this array. Remember that the length of an array has to be known at compile time, okay? So if, if uh, you want to deal with a runtime provided length, um, then you can't use this method. Um, so we create here uh, a 12 uh, element of U8 array. We leave it as undefined. And then we create an instance here of our fixed buffer allocator using its init uh, function. And we pass in uh, the pointer to that buff. Uh, actually, what the init function uh, requires is a slice of, of U8. Um, and passing in the pointer to the array will coerce to a slice, okay? And then on this line, we are, um, like uh, conventionally you'll see, uh, each allocator will have an allocator uh, method. And that allocator method is uh, what actually returns 
the allocator that you're going to be using okay so this is uh, like a convention that all of the allocators in the, in the SIG standard library follow this uh, approach so um, once you instantiate it you call the allocator method to obtain the actual allocator okay and usually um, this variable which is the variable that references the actual allocator uh, type that you are instantiating um, usually once you create it uh, or instantiate it you're going to have a defer uh, fba.d in it okay but in the case of fba uh, the fixed buffer allocator there there is no d in it because uh, we're basically dealing with memory on the stack okay uh, or even if you're not dealing with memory on the stack the allocator is uh, depending on um, the caller it's it, whoever it's creating the allocator is supplying the backing store so it's assuming that you're going to take care of freeing those resources in the case of stack memory they're going to be freed automatically when the function uh, exits okay so that's why there is no D in it for the fixed buffer allocator but for other allocators, you're going to be you're going to be seeing a D in it, which will free uh, resources to be used by the allocator, and you're going to have to be uh, aware of that and use the defer to to run that D in it uh, code. But that's not the case with the fixed buffer allocator. So once we have the allocator uh, at hand, we can call our cat alloc function as we did before with the allocator and the hello and the world strings. Uh, we make sure to uh, call here free on that slice that we got in this result variable using the defer statement. We're using the unconditional defer here because we're not going to be uh, needing this slice after we exit this test. Um, technically, once again, since the, the backing uh, bytes of, of this allocator is this array that we have on the stack, um, if we don't free this memory, it, would, it wouldn't be actually a memory leak because once the function exit, uh, this, this memory is going to be cleared up, okay? But uh, it's always good practice to always, uh, if, if uh, we have a function that states that you should free the memory, then there's, there's, uh, you don't lose much by actually uh, freeing here. Um, so it's a good practice to always uh, get in the habit of freeing uh, any memory that you have to free and finally we do an expect equals strings okay now we're gonna see another function that also takes an allocator but this one uh, I called it slice of a lock and this one is going to be a generic function which basically uh, generates a slice of uh, an item that you pass in and uh, that the, the, the type of the slice is going to depend on the type of the item so that's why you see here in the return type we're, we're returning a slice of and then we're detecting this is done at compile time with type of the, the item itself so since item is any type this is generic here and depending on the type of item that's going to be the type of this slice okay and we also receive here n, which is a u size. It's going to tell us uh, what's going to be the length of that slice, okay? Or basically, how much memory we're going to be allocating. Now, within this function, um, you're going to see that we have uh, here the step where we actually allocate that memory using a lock. Once again, we're going to use type of to detect the type of the item because we got to tell a lock what type of item uh, we're, we're going to be allocating space for and we use n here okay this is basically where you see uh, the different approaches between an array and a uh, heap allocated memory and in, in the case of an array the, the, the length the size has to be known at compile time in the case of using uh, allocators and a lock you can have a runtime known length here like we do have here in n so that's uh, one of the differences here and what we do here in this for loop is uh, we iterate over that newly allocated uh, a, a slice and um, in the capture here we're specifying uh, a pointer so we want to modify the elements 
and here we dereference that pointer and assign item to each of those elements so we're basically copying the same item to each of the elements um, we could have done this also with uh, mem copy but I, I wanted to show a different approach here and then finally um, we return that slice okay so how do we test this uh, we're going to be creating here a struct called foo it has a u8 field and a slice of const u8 uh, here both of them have default values so it'll be easy to instantiate as we do here we're creating this foo uh, constant of type foo and we don't provide anything here in the initializer because it has both fields have uh, default values okay here uh, our quantity is going to be two okay and what we're going to do is we're going to create our bagging store our buffer for the fixed buffer allocator but this time since we're not dealing directly with bytes we have to calculate uh, what's going to be that that length of the array okay so what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the 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 amount of elements that we want and we're going to multiply it by the result of this built-in called size of okay size of will tell you the size of a type so size of will tell tell us what what the size of foo is. We'll multiply that by the amount of how many foos we want, and that'll give us the number of bytes that we need, okay, to um, to be allocated. And uh, here, it's going to be once again. It's uh, an array of u8s. We instantiate the fixed buffer allocator using that uh, array as the backing store. Okay, pass in here the pointer, the cores to a slice. Once again here, we get the actual allocator from that uh, fixed buffer instance. And here we run our slice of uh, function. We pass in the allocator, we pass in foo, foo instance, and n. We make sure to call the free here on the result. And we uh, compare using this time expect equal slices okay and expect equal slices uh, the first parameter is going to be foo here it's the type that you're going to be uh, comparing slices of this type okay so we hard code it here we expect uh, a, a slice um, this is how you can um, create uh, in place hard coded slice here we're, we're using the address of to uh, coerce uh, a pointer to this hard-coded array here of two foos okay and this would produce a slice here for our comparison this is what we expect to uh, what we what we uh, obtain and stored in the result variable okay so let's uh, run our tests here and as you can see we have all tests passing um, so with this uh, you can see that the fixed buffer allocator is really simple to use um, all you have to be aware of is that when you're creating your backing store the, the array it's going to be uh, that allocated storage um, that you're going to pass into the init function of the fixed buffer allocator you have to um, take care that you calculate correctly how much bytes you're, you're going to need and once you do that correctly, uh, you're pretty much set. Um, you can use it in any type of function uh, or method that requires an allocator, just like any other allocator. But uh, with the benefit that you are using uh, stack allocated memory here, which is uh, really fast, and you get the benefits of that performance boost. Okay. Um, another instance where Zig offers you this type of flexibility. Uh, in other languages, uh, you could uh, achieve uh, this type of functionality, but it usually uh, makes you jump through some hoops, <laughs> and it's not so simple. But in Zig, it uses uh, the same allocator interface as any other allocator, and as you can see here, it's really simple um, to achieve this. Okay, So I hope you find this uh, useful. Dude the Builder here. I'll see you in the next one.